Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me here in my shop for, I think it's day two with this receiver. And what I'm going to be up to today is I'm going to be changing all the older capacitors. A bunch up here, a couple over here, and another ten up underneath. So I'm going to do them in groups. Maybe I think I'm going to do these guys first, along with these guys, get everything done on top, try the radio, change the ones underneath. Oh my gosh, I'm not alone in here today. I'm not alone at all. A in the darkness there, cats. <laughs> why does why my camera look like that? I was fiddling with the adjustments earlier. And it looks like I went a little low on this one. There they are. The two of you guys. Now, what's the problem this morning? You're both in here. Yeah, as soon as I start talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me guess. You want to go outside. Is that right? Is that right, Peanut? So he's just staring at me because, of course, language is not part of their life, right? They don't even understand that language exists. They do things and then they expect the other party to just figure it out from there. Now, you got to be pretty smart. <laughs> to get along with a cat. And there they go. Good. Good enough. Good. That's good enough for me. Maybe they're off to play together for a bit. <clears throat> but they don't like being talked about in public. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's really quite a straightforward process here. Just start doing them one at a time. And, uh, away they go. Let's do those three first right there okay so that's the three top ones here done and now I'm going after the these two bigger ones here okay there's the next two changed here Meanwhile, I've had some company. Woo! <laughs> had a little bit of company here. Oh, I get a kick out of my cats. What can I say? Okay. Time to test this guy out. See if I've ruined it yet. And to test out some capacitors that we've removed. Why don't we test the unit first? Everything's good. Power safe. Volume down. Switch on. There we go. What do you think, Shadow? What do you think? Think it's going to work? Yeah, it should work. I think I missed soldering one of the connections in there. So we're going to do it. Okay, uh, where's my solder? Hey, who took the solder? Shadow. There it is, right in front of my face. Okay, wouldn't do this live. Power's off. Soldering iron tips are often grounded. So, well, you know what? It, I think it was soldered in the end. Just maybe we get a little more solder on it. Ah. Okay, that's got it good.
690. Well, I don't think it should work any better, but it seems to. That's good. It's, the main thing is it's still working. So, ROM for some more capacitors. What do you what do you say about that shadow? Shadow, pay attention. Yeah, what do you say about time? <laughs> yeah, she says the usual thing. More capacitors to do here. So to, to do the rest of the capacitors, I'll be working underneath the chassis, and I have a choice here of either standing the chassis up on its end and working with my neck crooked, or flip it right over and have it right upside down. And the way to do that is I've taken one of these. These are like cupboard shelves you buy, you know, for your, your mugs and cups and stuff. And I find these pretty darn handy here. So I'm setting it down on the solid part of the chassis. And then I'm going to just crudely tape it in place. Just so it'll stay where it is while I flip the radio over. That's the idea of this. Okay, now I'm going to take these wires off just so I don't get into trouble. Power cord is coming right out the end here. So if I just if I can flip it over this way. It's easier for me to flip it this way, I think, physically. This is going to flop loose. This is going to come and knock this off. When I get this thing upside down, it'll leave me in a jackpot. We're going to gamble. Here we go. Okay, got it. Now, is it balanced? I don't know that it's... It's a little, a little bit tippy to the front, but that's not bad at all. Perfect. So there we are. So now I've got it upside down work in there and get rid of what do we start with well let's see um, where's the the front end of this radio it is kind of down this way so might as well just proceed across like this I think this one this one this one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven of these guys You know what, before we do it though, we have to test the ones I took out and be absolutely sure that this is necessary. Man, pretty sure, but pretty sure is not absolutely sure. So I'm going to get a little bit of evidence here on the uh, condition of these capacitors using this device. Never mind all the junk. These out of here. These are from other projects. Get them out. Okay. Now, let's go for the big one. Or one of the big ones. 0.22. It actually looks to be in pretty good shape, man. That's just the tar they put in to keep water from getting inside this. Actually, this looks very good. This looks actually very, very good. <laughs> Let's see. Doesn't mean it's good. That's for sure. So first we put a very small voltage on here, 50 volts. Maybe not small. But. So what's going to happen? I'm going to move this control, spring-loaded control, to leakage. It's going to apply the voltage on the capacitor, and this I is going to react. If current continues to flow through the capacitor, the I will be closed, or partially closed. The capacitor charges up successfully and there's no more leakage current. It'll be open just like you see it now. Here we go. 50 volts, there's nothing wrong with this capacitor. Uh-oh. 150. What's the rating on this guy? 250. Wow. 
Well, it's not bad. Like, it's not really bad. But it's not perfect. So, probably could have left this one in there. That's a little bit disappointing. Let's try another one here. This is this is where I, I stay honest. People jump in radios and change capacitors and then, you know, claim great things have been done, but if you watch my channel you can see I start up a lot of radios full of ratty capacitors and, and, and radio kind of works. Fifty volts, here we go. Oh, here we go. This guy's gonna be the same. 150. But about the same quality. Very, very slow to charge. I got a capacitor here with 100 volts on it. Well, certainly not, certainly not terrible. Let's check this one. Man, this looks pretty good. I'm looking for cracks right where the wire lead goes in. But then again, it's actually looking pretty good. 50 volts. So it's it's partially open. Okay, 150 volts. It's not going to open. So the you know the big ones literally have more compound in them, just black tar. To maybe uh, maybe it makes them last a little longer. But these you know as these go. These particular ones don't appear to be in terrible, terrible shape. Often they're all shattered and cracked and really, really out of sorts. 50 volts, what do you say? Same as the last one. Partially open and it won't open on 150. So probably this radio could have continued at its level of performance for quite a long time before uh, really going south. There's another one here. Oh, this has got some kind of paint on it here. I guess it's wax. Is that wax? Not wax. It's not that black stuff. Fifty volts, what do you say? Partially open. So now it also depends upon where these particular capacitors are. With their little bit of leakiness, in some positions it wouldn't matter. In other positions though, a little tiny leak is a big problem. Those are usually uh, high voltage blocking capacitors trying to keep voltage away from something and if they leak, if pressure goes through. Okay, so I'm going to attend to, I don't know, maybe 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 this bunch in here, down on the deck here, yeah. Okay, oh, which bunch? This bunch. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five of them right in here. So we're taking a closer look here. Uh, not so much at this capacitor, but ooh, it looks like it's taken a bit of a beating. Notice the uh, lead coming out of it on the left there, right in, right in the middle of the camera. You see all the dust collected to it? And if you look at the other lead, we can get down to it. It looks clean. Why dust on one side? So this is telling you this is a high voltage terminal here. It's picking up dust. You can see it's collected on this resistor. Now, what a real reason I have the camera on is to figure out what this part is here, which looks like a capacitor. Um, 70 degree C. Uh, yeah, it sure looks like a capacitor. Oh, yeah, flip it up here. And that wire has all got uh, dust on it. That's all. That's, all, that's that's carrying high voltage. Probably. Does not want to reveal itself. Oh, 560 picofarads. Uh, why? Why such a big capacitor for 
500 picofarads. Okay, that's what it is though, so add that to the list. Why don't we just take a close look at these while we've got the camera going here. jam down in there. Okay, they'll be the fun ones. We got one out here too. Okay. Very good. Okay, I need to take a very close look at these capacitors here for where the wires go. So okay one goes to that lug there. That's easy to get to now it's the other end that is I think that's it there you have no idea what I'm looking at or do you it comes to this terminal there um, now this other big capacitor okay one ends easy the, again the other end is really I think it's I think it's bending back up and coming up to this terminal here what I can do is I can nip this wire here and yank on this capacitor, pull it out, and that'll for sure show where the lead is going. I, th I think that's what it is, though. Could have the two of these capacitors mixed up easy. Yeah, I think, uh, well, either, either one of them. Cut one end and pull. I think I'm going to do it with the big one here. We'll cut one end and try pulling it out. Slipping it out. Oh, and by the way, while I was working, as often is the case, you notice things. So that capacitor down there that says uh, Fuber, Fuber, Uber, <laughs> something on it anyway, that's an electrolytic capacitor. It's small. It's located, um, well, it, it, I'm not sure where it's located. I'm thinking that's probably the FM uh, the FM uh, detector capacitor. That's what I'm thinking. So I don't really have a schematic. I think if I, I think I can scare one up. It's all in German. I guess all those are hooked up to the same terminal there. Wow. Okay, but back back to this guy. Right, cut the end and pull on them. Cut the end and pull on it. Come back. Okay, so now it's quite obvious it's this terminal. And that's a 0.1 500 volt capacitor. And I cut it away from this terminal. Didn't I? <laughs> yeah, this one to this one. Short little distance, 0.1. But I want to do that right away. Um, I want to pull out the other one. Well, maybe now I can see it more clearly. I can actually see it more clearly. It's definitely going to this terminal here, up to there. That's easy. So I'll leave that one in for now. I'll replace this guy. Point one. Good. Okay, let's test a bunch more capacitors I've taken out. I think they're all going to come out pretty much the same. 50 volts right open. 150, 
partially open. There's a big one. You'd kind of think, well, the big ones would be the problem, wouldn't they? Maybe not, because they have so much bulk. It's just, okay, here we go. That's 150. It won't open. Okay, so much for the theory. Bigger, not necessarily better. Probably just like people, each one of these has its own individual life. It's been doing something in the radio. It's suffered various, you know, tortures throughout its life. 150 again. Won't open. Now oh, these are definitely coming out worthy of replacement. Again, whether these were actually disturbing the radio, they weren't. You know, you can guess. I mean, it's not helpful that they're leaky. That's for sure. I don't think there's anywhere a leaky capacitor is a good thing. I won't open on 150. Ooh, look at my finger. <laughs> I almost opened on 150 there, and this last one. You have to make it like this to make it more precise. This is a very small one. 560 picofarads. That's 0.5 nanofarads, I think. Okay, 25 volts. Right open. 150. Right open. 250. Right open. Well, he's a good one. And this one, this one could have stayed in. Too bad I noticed it. I hadn't noticed it. <laughs> I wouldn't have changed it. The thing is, you can't know, right, until you've uh, until you've gone through them. I got a whole bunch more here. Did I just retest the same ones? I did before. Oh, okay. This thing had some voltage on it still. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Okay, don't worry about it. Open part way on 50. No hope on 150. Yeah, so. I mean, the surprising thing here would be to find all these capacitors as good as new. Now, that would be surprising. This one's just a little different from the others. A different potting material here. 50 volts. Watch your finger. Partially open. 150. It won't open on 150. Very con sort of consistent level of degradation here. I guess, you know, put a pile of people in a boat, sail them around the world, and they'll all be starving an equal amount, won't they? That one's even worse. Yeah, no, he's even doing that. Don't do that. Don't waste your time here. Can we find one reasonably good one? Now there's lots of other capacitors in there of a different type, which I am not replacing. It's going to open all the way. It's just barely going to open. It's so slow. Watch out. Incidentally, on this instrument, when you let go of the spring-loaded switch, it puts a uh, ground across here and it shorts it out. So, just give it a moment; it'll bleed out most of the voltage. Now, I'm going to apply voltage and rotate molecules. This is a molecule rotator. Rotate, boys. That's as far as I want to rotate, and it's definitely not even worth doing that. Okay, so consistent result of capacitors that probably would let the radio work, but in the longer run are going to degrade its performance if they haven't already. And if any one of those is a uh, blocking uh, B plus from a grid, that grid's in trouble in this radio. Okay, uh, so what's next on the parade here? 
So I haven't played the radio. I gotta play the radio yet. But I think the next ones I'm gonna do are these. All these ones up in here. Maybe maybe I'll do this whole area here. What's that leave? That leaves only one. Oh my gosh, that's right on the power. This is this is on the power here. We got we gotta do this one right away, in fact. Uh, you know, not that there's some kind of super urgency, but I should do that next and get that out of there. I'm going to do this one, then we're going to test the radio, and then I'll do the rest. So I'm going to do that one there. Okay, hold the fort here. Uh, that capacitor has three wires coming out of it. Let's see what that's all about. Um, so a three-wire capacitor. Caught me by surprise. So on this end, you can see there are two wires coming out of a cut one already, and then I discovered, hey, that didn't free it up. How come? Another another wire there. And on this end, now this one, look at this. I also noticed this. This has a red cover on it, and the one over here had a black cover on it, or has a, they have black covers. What's that about? What's, what is this? It says two time, oh, it's just simply two capacitors. They are, hey, they are connected in different locations. I've never seen one quite like this. Two, it says two times, two times 3,000 picofarad is what it looks like, 50. Okay, it's not what I thought. I thought it was a shielded capacitor. Because um, I have come across those. This definitely does look like it has two, two, uh, two leads here. It's an F one 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 nine X minus twenty to plus eighty five five hundred volt AC it says AC on it so you know this is a special capacitor I think I, I think I think this is kind of what I thought now is that five thousand what's under that three thousand you can scrape it off here. Sometimes you can scrape that stuff off without. Uh, no, I can't. I can't get that stuff off. Right on the key number. Well, it probably doesn't matter really if it's a three or a five. Let's assume it's a five. That's five thousand picofarads. That's point zero zero five. So that's kind of small. Point, so 2.005 capacitors. Why, why the red? Oh, it's built right into the capacitor. There's no way this is... Well, I don't know why, why they put red wire. This black covers right into it. So I think this is intended to go across the power line. That's why it has the X on it. That's what the X is for. Cross the power line. It's two capacitors in one. I think that's all we're looking at. Never seen one like that. Okay. Uh, I'll use I'll use two capacitors here. Okay. So I've installed two uh, what are called safety capacitors here. Um, I believe the deal with these is they just will not explode and will not catch fire. No matter what happens, nothing's going to happen to these. Uh, certainly, in what's left of my lifetime, so that's it. That's it. That's done. The thing is, they're right across the power line, so you know you got Niagara Falls pushing on these. You want some good capacitors there. Okay, so it's time to test the radio before I go any further, because I've done really almost too many changes now, and I run the risk of making a mistake and not knowing it. And I run the huge risk of making more than one mistake. 
and that's bad. Okay, I'm going to flip it over here. Again, I don't really care how well it works, just that it works. It's really the only aim. I'm gonna attach the speakers here. Make sure I put it on the right one, right? Because there's the high voltage terminal here. I don't think my little speaker would, would do well with the 500 volts on it. That's good. Oh, caught on here. Yikes, that's not so good. I don't want that to happen. Part of this is live, eh? These lights. I don't want to bump into those. We're good. I think we're good. Okay. Like a fool, I left it plugged in the outlets, but that's okay. We're going straight on AM. Straight on AM. Okay, dim bulbs say nothing terrible is here. Gotta be patient, boy. Where'd the stations go? One. Yeah, so you got the antenna in the wrong way. I think your radio is broken. Let's get a check on FM2 just because we're here. I'll put in the piece of crap wire here for an antenna. What's that? Am I soldering iron? Something interfering anyway. Okay, okay. I don't want to gamble with a copyright hit. And he wants to be with me again. I don't know about that. I really don't. So, perfect. More capacitors to do. Things are going great. Okay, let's see what's left here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more to go. Now the, these capacitors here, I just tend to believe these are more reliable. Um, are they? I believe so. <laughs> so I'm going to leave those in. So it's just these. Okay, get busy on those. Okay, so that's the last of the capacitors here. Sure, they're all soldered in. Good. Okay, time to test it. Time to test it again.
speaker speaker on okay and uh, so we're gonna just hey another one we're gonna here's the bag of goodies that came out of there so 14 uh, 18 of them 18 capacitors what difference does this make? Probably not a lot. Probably not a lot. We will see. But what it has done is it's given this thing uh, life into the future that it didn't really have before. So we're going to go on AM. Everything looks safe, ready to go. There we go. Dim bulbs. Okay, and a dim bulb say everything's good. Thank you, dim bulbs. Sit and patiently wait. Maybe I didn't turn it up enough. seem different. Something funny going on there. Wow, it's just really, really different. Very, very strong noise signal here, I believe. Hey, you know what? I don't, yeah, I do. What? <laughs> yeah, 115 volts. It's running on full voltage there. Magic eye, it's very dull. So I think there's just something here, right here. Some noise thing in my shop. seem to be doing some weird stuff. That's pretty weird. You know, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like it's a re regeneration. Picking it up here and there. So, you know, that could be alignment. Uh, it's a bit of a scary beast to start doing alignment on. Uh, in fact, you know what they've done here? They looks like they've stuck glue. No, it's wax. They've stuck wax. Why does it come up like that? It's kind of come up. There's wax in here. They've waxed all these up. So these are the adjustments you would tend to want to go for in an alignment along with many, many others. You know what? This may not be happening. It may not be aligning this guy. Because it's uh because it's pretty questionable about whether there would be much advantage to tuning these anyway. The radio's not in terribly rough shape, chances are. That's okay. All the stuff underneath, though. Wow. Well, that's something to think about. Hey, what happened on shortwave? Did anything good come of all that button pushing yesterday? Let me put an antenna on. Okay, I have the 
a feeling the antenna is not switched down here. But let's see what happens. Feel like kind of bumping over something. Right in there. So if if the switch is not making contact, it's maybe not a question of dirt. It, it, it may not be making contact. It may be missing somehow. Something has to be bent to bring it back into contact. It's particularly bad here. doesn't really care about the short wave, so I, you know, unless it just comes back, something funny has happened, I think, in the switch. And it's a very weird feel. Does the other ones feel that way? We never tried long wave, but there's nothing on long wave to listen to, really. Maybe the contacts have actually broken away or something in there. Um, you know, another possibility is a cold solder joint. Doesn't seem like it though. Well, that's too bad on that. But uh, okay, so what's left here is a bit of alignment. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to even try it. I will try and study up as much as I can. Could could be just one or two adjustments might make a big difference on the FM, but on the other hand, could wreck it up. So I'm going to spend my day thinking about that, and I don't know if I'm going to try it or not. Thanks a lot for watching to this point. Have a great day.